What's going on guys? Today we are going to talk about current. We're going to talk about it here at Lake Ozark specifically. Uh, what does that mean? Why do we care about it? What can it do for us? And uh, just kind of how to approach it. So if you're new to bass fishing or fishing in general, you're going to oftentimes hear people say, especially during the summertime, uh, hey, they're running current or are they running current? You know, it helps the bite line. And what does that mean? So the dam here behind me, is primarily used for power generation here. So we got little turbines over there, water flows down, makes them spin, generates electricity. Uh, that's the gist of it. It also has floodgates behind me, so if they can't discharge enough through power generation, uh, then they can just open the floodgates. So when they generate, it kind of turns this lake into a river, I would say. Especially uh, if you go up to the other end of the lake, which there's another dam, Truman Dam, which dumps into Lake of the Ozarks. If that is also open, then it's really like a river because the water is flowing out of Truman through Lake the Ozarks and then out this dam here. So Truman is a flood control lake and I'll put the info up here where you can check the water level and all that of Truman. It's owned by the core where this lake, Lake the Ozarks is owned by Amron. But they do work hand in hand to control water levels and stuff in the river. So um, right now, Truman is just a little bit high, we've had some rain, expecting more rain, whatever. So they basically have been discharging out of Truman and then discharging out of Bagnell Dam here via generation. So a quick little lesson of the numbers here. Uh, I will put the pages that you could see it on uh, Amron's website. Is It's going to be measured in CFS, which is cubic feet per second. And I believe that this dam can generate... 37,000 CFS with the generators and if they have the floodgates open plus the generators going I think it's 50,000 so quite a bit of water moving through there but um, that is the maximum amount so that kind of gives you a scale for if you're looking at the app how much generation is happening the higher that number is the more current you're going to get the more flow you're going to get through here and generally the better the fishing is going to be or at least it's going to stack those fish up uh, in, a, in a tighter spot because they're going to be relating more to that current. So that leads us right into why we care about this and that is because it stacks these fish up in predictable areas. Uh, you know think of a river system you have humps you have things that are diverting current blocking current uh, creating eddies and that's positioning those fish because that's where they're gonna get their food from. There's things coming through this current and it's no different here whenever this is happening. So we will go, we'll look at some points. We'll look at bluff ends, things with the main river channel. I'll show you my graph here. Uh, just kind of give you a rundown of how things look and then how fish can set up on different spots, what I like to look for, and then we can talk about some of the baits that we like to use uh, to catch these fish. And uh, ultimately it can just be a lot of fun. Um, it seems that the earlier in the summer that you get out here and do this, the better it is. It just seems as soon as they're done spawning, if they're generating, they come out, you can catch so many fish and just have the time of your life catching fish. You can catch some really big ones too. Um, but as summer goes on, fishing pressure increases, it does seem to taper off a little bit on uh, how easy they are to catch or how many you can catch in one particular spot before you kind of have to, to jump and point out. All right, so looking at the graph here real quick, we are down here. This is the dam itself. This orange highlighted area, that is the main river channel. That is what the Osage River was before the lake was dammed up. So that is basically leading right into where the generators are. That's, like I said, the old river channel. So you have channel side and you have the non-main river channel side of the lake. Generally speaking, this is gonna be the steeper side. This is gonna be a little less steep. You're still gonna have steeper stuff, but you're gonna have more of your flatter, longer tapering stuff away from the river channel itself. But as far as which side to fish, I kind of mix it up. I do a little bit of both. Sometimes it'll seem that you do better on the flatter points. Uh, sometimes it seems that you'll do better on the steeper stuff right next to the main river channel. So kind of let the fish tell you uh, what's working best that particular day. Like I said, just experiment and kind of go back and forth. Don't get dead set on, on one thing uh, and pigeonhole yourself. So the first thing we're gonna look at is a bluff end over here. And I wanna zoom in on this so I can kind of show you the contour a little bit. So very, very steep at the top of my screen coming down and you can see it kind of flattens out and you've got this flatter space here. 
So when you get to things like this, you can look for rocks, you can look for brush piles, additional pieces of cover. But one thing that I like to look for or look at are the contours and kind of how they're shaped and which direction I think the water is going to be flowing. So let me actually zoom out here for a second. And as the water is coming through the lake, it's going to be flowing down this way. So in this case, down the lake that is west, it's going to be flowing this way into the dam. That's the direction that the current's going to be going. So if we zoom in to our bluff end again, and if we imagine we have water coming down and it kind of hits this little corner and then it, it it's going up you have to remember it's it's increasing elevation here so it's like going up a hill so the water is kind of flowing like that if that makes sense but it can also kind of swirl a little bit as it does that so you have to try and envision how these fish are going to be set up the fish are always going to be facing into the current they're going to be swimming into that current the food's going to be coming to them that's how they're always going to be positioned now there can be times when there becomes slack water on these points where it's like on a current seam just outside of it and the fish can also like to sit there because then they don't have to exert as much energy as if they're actually in the current but nonetheless if they're in this kind of little pocket here i would expect the fish to be facing this direction uh, if they get further out here sometimes if you imagine the water kind of comes up and then kind of swirls back down then you get fish that are end up facing towards the top of my screen so that is something that I like to try and visualize in my head but water can do really weird things all right so here is the bluff end so remember we'd have current coming down from this way it's very very steep comes up kind of jumps up and then flattens out on the back side there so you have water coming down you can maybe have a little bit of like a almost a, a small eddy in there at the top of it but primarily you're going to be finding the fish at the top of this little hump here um, and they can be facing this way into the current or they can also be facing that way along that other bank just kind of depends uh, how far out they are into that so boat positioning is important um, obviously if you have wind or waves or something that's going to push you around like way more um, then make that your priority but if it's calm kind of like it is right now then i would try and get it to where my bait like i'm casting and i'm going to bring my bait with the current so i can hopefully bring that bait right to those fish i don't come behind them or off the side or anything like that i want to try and present it right into their face so that is an example there of the bluff end let's go look at um something that's a little bit more flat like a more rounded point and see what that looks like okay now here is a good example of a flatter more round point up here it's actually kind of a little cluster of them you got here 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 you could fish all these even over there um, and if you're going to catch them on one you're probably going to have similar results on the rest of them so um, as you can see you know they they do drop off get pretty deep but you do have if i zoom in you've got a lot more of a uh like a shelf just a, a larger flat area the contour lines are spaced out so when you're looking at this primarily your water is going to travel kind of like over your flatter points like i said it's not as much of a steep contour so it's not going to eddy that water quite as much it's not going to make such drastic changes whenever you have the really steep contours that's when the water just does really really weird things whenever it's more of a gradual thing like that i feel like it's more predictable but here's what the round points flat stuff looks like more or less i should say uh, just real gradual you can just see in the hillside like it's going down but it's not a bluff so this is a good example of that just really good easy points to fish um nothing crazy and i feel like on these it does not matter as much on your angle um just because i don't think the water does as crazy things but certainly with your flatter rounder stuff like this or your really steep banks i think it is important to change the angle that you're fishing from so if you uh, catch two or three fish and then they stop biting we'll change your angle and cast from a different area or if you show up and you catch no fish we'll don't just leave immediately change your angle a little bit um, and see if that gets anything to bite so just try and kind of replicate what you're doing i call it point hopping that's what you hear a lot of people call it when you start fishing this main lake stuff is you're just literally 
your vision this point and now I'm gonna go to the next one that looks just like it or I might go to a steep one and go back and forth and see which one's producing better and then I'm probably gonna stick with that uh, until I get my fish that I need now another thing we can look at is like an underwater point but this is generally something that is very flat um, and goes out into the lake and you can sometimes find them on the channel side as well. So that actually is like a flat that comes out into the main river channel and those can be really good too. But I'll show you here on the map. This is what it looks like. I'll zoom out a little bit so you have a better idea. So you've got like the peninsula that comes out here. The duck looks like a duck. And then you have the underwater point that kind of juts out. Now, like I said, this one's pretty deep. This one's like 40 feet all the way out here but it does shallow up to like the 30s here and then it's gradually tapering. But you see these large flats out here, hopefully you can see well in the sun. This big contour that's just a big flat area or out here. A lot of times there's these all over the lake that are, you know, like 20 to 25 feet deep, which is perfect. A lot of times someone will put a brush pile like right there, right there. Somewhere, somewhere along that and that could be a really good spot to key into. Now, as far as baits go, you can throw a lot of different stuff. I'm gonna show you kind of what I like to have tied on. I usually have a full deck, uh, at least when I'm starting off, because I like to throw multiple things on the same point. So we've got the classic uh, cranks. This is Berkeley Dredger, whatever crankbait you wanna throw, get something that's gonna get down to the bottom of the depth that you're fishing and beef on the bottom there. You got your 10 inch worm, your curly tail worm. This is just a zoom worm, but Again, whatever brand you want to use. Uh, mix up the colors. I like to throw a half ounce weight so I can feel. Got the classic shaky head here. That's always uh, tried and true. I've got a smaller jig. Uh, this is just a half ounce, small profile jig. Sometimes if it gets a little tough, that can help get you some bites. We can't talk about main lake without football jigs. So whatever color you want to throw on that. I don't know if color really matters all that much. This is brown with green tinsel. But the jigs, I like to have something that's flapping. Lots of vibration, lots of movement. This is a rage crawl on here. Something with big flappers uh, hopping up and down. You can throw brush hogs on these. You can throw brush hogs by themselves. Whatever plastics you want to throw. You have a lot of options out here uh, on the main lake. You can even throw jigging spoons or like a, a flutter spoon, I should call it. Um, if you want to get crazy and flop that around and see if you can catch anything big. You can throw glide baits out here. And then of course you can throw your regular swim baits. Uh, you got Kitex, any other brands you wanna throw. Um, just throwing those swim baits over the same spots. Every day would be a little different. Some days crankbait bite might be good. Some days crankbait bite is no good. And then same thing with like your worm bites and stuff. Usually on the days if they're rural active, you can pretty much throw a rock down there and catch them. Uh, but if they're being finicky, sometimes you need that crankbait to get them to react, to make them eat. Otherwise, they're just gonna stare at it as it goes by and you can't get them to bite. That's kind of what happened to me today when I fished for a while on the main lake. Could not get them suckers to bite for nothing. They were there, could see them, could not get them to bite. That's pretty much the gist of uh, current and kind of how it sets these fish up. One other thing I wanna add is graphing. You can drive your boat over this stuff. You can graph if you want. You don't have to. You can also just kind of point hop, especially with like forward facing sonar and stuff. Um, I think it's a little easier to just sometimes pull up, pan around, see what you see, and go from there. But you certainly can graph, especially if you're wanting to find a bunch of good spots. Um, you know, idling is usually faster to, to go over and just kind of drop some waypoints and then come back later and fish it. Um, but again, brush piles, rock piles, things like that on some of these spots can enhance it and give you an even better target. Um, for these fish to sit into. Sometimes those things are not necessarily in the current though And then it seems like the fish don't really mess with it They're actually out in the current or right on the current seam. So hopefully it's helped you a little bit uh, If you're unfamiliar with it or you don't really understand what people are talking about or how it sets these fish up uh, When they are generating and help you get out here and uh, put some more fish in the boat consistently So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one guys